we're in Daiso. Daiso in Korea. Let's see what they have here. This Daiso was only a five minute walk from our house, so we went there several times to shop. For those who are familiar with Daiso, you know that this is a discount store similar to Dollar Tree in America. Daiso had its humble beginnings as a street vending 100 yen shop owned by Hidotake Yano and his wife in 1972. He ran his business from the back of a truck. And the reason he sold things for 100 yen was simply to make the counting easier. What a practical guy. Wow. In 1977, the company got rebranded as Daiso and has since grown to over 5,000 stores worldwide. The secret sauce to their success is the procurement of the highest quality merchandise. They do this by purchasing items in large volumes in order to get a bulk discount. Holy moly! Yano also realized if he spent an extra 10 yens, the quality improves drastically and the customers are more satisfied. This positively altered the perception of the store. Because of this, customers are more likely to impulse buy and do treasure hunting. And unlike the 99 cent store or Dollar Tree in America, Daiso is frequently found near high-end department stores, instead of ghetto neighborhoods infested with hood rats. Make sure to wear a bulletproof vest next time you go to the Dollar Tree. Taking us back to Korea, Korea has the second most Daiso stores in the world, with Japan being the first. Outside of Japan, I've never seen so many Daisos in my life. I mean Korea is a quarter of the size of California and they currently have 1,150 stores. It literally felt like there was a Daiso on every block. And it didn't seem like a big thing at the time, but the logo looked different. Was my mind playing tricks on me? Did I just get Mandela affected by Daiso? Mandela effect, popularized phenomenon in which a large group of people collectively misremember facts, events, or other details in a consistent manner. Actually, no, I wasn't crazy. The Japanese logo is pink and looks like this, while the Korean one is red and looks like this. But why? I don't know. The Daiso in Korea started as a Korean firm, Asung, in 1997. They had a similar business, so Daiso of Japan invested 4.3 billion won into their company, and they swiftly got rebranded. Plus, Daiso sounded similar to Taiso, which means I have everything in Korean. It all fell into place, so Daiso of Korea and Daiso of Japan function as one unit for about 10 years. Islands disputed by two Asian neighbors are at the center of a fresh flare-up of tension. South Korea has flexed its military muscles, staging a defense drill to drive back any foreign landings from the outcrop it calls Dokdo. But in 2011, Korea and Japan had a land conflict about an island known as Lian Court Rocks. These islands fall halfway between Korea and Japan, and both countries are claiming ownership of it. They are no more than 47 acres in size, with steep cliffs and a total population of two. A husband and wife team that spends their days catching up. Hello. So what's the big deal? Turns out it's simply because of national pride. And instead of taking a neutral stance, Daiso of Japan hops onto the bandwagon. In 2011, Daiso of Korea split relations with its parent company, redesigned their logo, and refused to sell any more of Daiso of Japan's products. Interesting enough, they did keep the same name. You can't really put a price on brand recognition. Today, Daiso of Korea is a fully Korean-owned company after they bought out the Japanese shares sometime in 2023. Going through the aisle, I would never have guessed this wasn't the same store, as everything looks similar. But it's good to know that if you shop here, you'll find items you can't get at any other Daisos in the world. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, here's some more suggestions. And as always, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications, and I'll see you on the next Kim's Adventure.